Thank you for visiting the Coin Lady channel again. Dear everybody, is XRP, are we jeopardizing regulatory clarity? Will we simply have our XRP legal victory in the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit revoked? Yes, it is indeed what will transpire, according to a prominent journalist. Crypto basic sex triumph over Coinbase threatens Ripple, according to this top journalist's headline. Well, there is plenty to discuss here. The thought of most of this happening seems completely absurd to me. Because of that, I'm seriously considering not even trying. However, the subject is intriguing. We will, therefore, navigate this. However, I will inform you right from the bat about XRP's legal position. No, that will remain the same. When it comes to it, I am absolutely certain. But before we go any further, I should make it plain that I am not financially supported in any way. Do not take my financial advice as gospel. Also, listen, you shouldn't base your investments on what I say. As a pastime and for fun, I enjoy making films on YouTube regarding crypto-related subjects. I'm just an enthusiast. Here we have a table setter, as is proper. I'd want to do a brief review of this. US SEC formally recognizes XRP is non-security in fresh court papers, according to a headline from Coin Ads dated August 21, last year. Thus, I discussed it at the time, even though the SEC highlighted it. A post from August 18 is this one. To Judge Torres last year, I forwarded a screenshot of an SEC court document. What I've marked in red is the pertinent area where they wrote the typeface. This is what the SEC sent to Judge Taurus. Seriously, folks, the SEC has abandoned the idea of XRP's legal status and isn't even trying to get an appellate review of any rulings related to the reality that all we have here is worthless computer code. Therefore, I dialed the number on August 18th. Now the SEC is coming out and saying it's not going to challenge the judge's ruling that XRP isn't a security. The statement made by Judge Rakoff should not be construed as a threat, not even the SEC shares this view. Naturally, the credit for discovering that first goes to Attorney Morgan. I underlined it as well. Plus, I mentioned the Judge Rigo issue back then, but it's its own class where he argued against some of Judge Torres's points of view, not XRP's legal standing, mind you, just so we're clear. Therefore, it is, first and foremost, the way life is. This is what has transpired, and I refuse to think for a second that anything other than what has already happened will change, even though the SEC has stated that they do not want anything to change. Therefore, I still do not believe we lose the possibility of an appeal or a clawback of whatever has transpired here. Now, though, we can go into the details. And I've included the thoughts of a few lawyers, including Bill Morgan, in this post, but the text is as follows. After the judge rejected Judge Torres' decision in the Coinbase case, Fox Business journalist Charles Gasparini speculated that the appellate court could overturn Ripple's victory over SEC. More questions than answers have arisen about the regulatory body's legal dispute with Ripple Labs since the recent SEC vs Coinbase ruling. Remember how prominent San Francisco-based exchange Coinbase tried to get out of the SEC case by bringing up the Ripple verdict, more especially, the ruling on digital exchange programmatic sales of XRP. Here I shall pause to make a note. What I just emphasized is not what I said. For the avoidance of doubt, that is not that. The SEC has stated that they will not be appealing XRP's legal status. According to them, it's simply computer code. I understand. I guess we can all agree on that now. The SEC has already said no. Therefore, that portion is already distinct. Well, the piece remains. Because they were completed through blind bid slash ask transactions, XRP sold on digital exchanges does not qualify as investment contracts, according to a portion of the ruling and the Ripple case. Philip, however, 
had this argument dismissed by U.S. District Judge Catherine Polk on Wednesday, March 27, thereby ruling with the SEC. Now listen up, because I want to make one thing clear before we go any further. That has to do with the request for dismissal. So, we'll have to come back to that. There is a huge difference between the standards you'd expect it to be upheld in an emotional summary judgment, and the standard you'd want it to be obvious in the Coinbase case. The piece goes on. Guests Brino suggest that the SEC's recent victory over Coinbase should serve as a warning to XRP holders, claiming that a higher court could undo Ripple's victory. Charles Gasparini, a senior correspondent at Fox Business, echoes this sentiment, citing anonymous securities lawyers who have commented on the matter. Once more, I will reiterate it, not even the SEC questions XRP's legitimacy. That was their last statement regarding the subject. I fully realize that this in no way precludes the possibility of additional lawsuits. Regarding the implications for XRP, it doesn't imply that subsequent appeal requests can't be made. No. And if you remember back to last summer, when Judge or Attorney Jeremy Hogan was bringing this up, he was in the middle of the argument over whether or not XRP constituted a security. Judge Torres had already declared that dicta was the appropriate term on July 13th. And there's no way to even file an appeal for that. Therefore, not only is an appeal futile, but the SEC has also stated that they will not pursue an appeal of this decision. That it's merely code is something they both agree on. For XRP holders, it is paramount. By the way, is there anything else in this matter that can be appealed? I mean, it's not like I want the SEC to cause ripples and further problems. As you might expect, I'm not exactly taking the side of the SEC. The everyday people it's repealed wouldn't care about that. I am merely stating that. Peace remains, however, Judge Feeler relied on Judge Jed's rationale and the set case against Terraform Labs when she rejected Ripple's decision, as Gasparini pointed out. Judge Rakoff, like Judge Feeler, rejected Judge Torres' reasoning about Ripple's programmatic sales of XRP. In the past, Gasparino maintained his speculation that the Supreme Court will reverse Ripple's victory, arguing that Judge Torres's ruling implies that XRP might be both a security and a non-security simultaneously. Well, it's clear that's not the case. Furthermore, Judge Torres failed to establish that an additional charge constitutes a security in some instances, but not others. Charles Gasparini has argued that Judge Torres said that. However, that is absolutely false. The details of each transaction's facts and conditions are at issue. That concludes it. Additionally, she mentioned that XRP as an asset is not a security, which is why it's important to keep it apart from other considerations. Regardless, go ahead and proceed. There has been much speculation about whether the Second Circuit will reverse the Ripple decision ever after Judge Feeler handed down the Coinbase ruling. Gasparini's judgment on the Coinbase verdict and its significance to the Ripple litigation has been disregarded by prominent industry experts, as expected. Specifically, attorney and seed starter inventor Jesse Hines deems Reno's opinion as a poor choice. Hines scoffed at Gasp Reno's logic, pointing out that no legitimate attorney would rule on a Ripple case summary judgment based on a petition to dismiss, as Coinbase did. Let me take a moment to mention this. Just a few minutes ago, I was making a similar point regarding motions to dismiss. Basically, if a party wants a dismissal, it's not because it's a higher bar, but because it's a low bar for the Supreme Court. Since the SEC only needs to prove that the complaint was submitted correctly from a procedural standpoint, Coinbase has a low bar to clear. Due to the nature of the dismissal motion, it is not necessary to address the merits of each argument. That is not the purpose of that portion of the trial. It's as if the very idea of a court proceeding is questionable. This judge's decision deviates significantly from the typical procedure for a request for summary judgment or any other type of final case decision 
because all he did was state that bar had been fulfilled. Distinctly diverse. I also think it's a mistake that Charles Gasparini isn't acknowledging it. But that is precisely what he is emphasizing here. Reiterating his earlier criticism of Gasparini, Hines now claims that no legitimate attorney would have applied the decision on Coinbase request to dismiss to the summary judgment in the Ripple case. To set the scene, the lawsuit involving SEC and Coinbase is currently in the discovery phase, and the judge has not yet announced a verdict. The video ends there. As always, I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe and leave a comment with your opinions. Coming up shortly, farewell.